Hey everybody and welcome back, or welcome if you are new. Um, hi. So today I would like to have a dialogue. I would like to have a conversation with you, you, my lovely viewer, the viewer who views my shit and who most likely knows that I have a thing for extreme horror books, disturbing books, shit like that. Stuff that like spits in the face of normal society. Taboo shit, you know, books like that, that's what's up. So, I am disappointed that I wasn't recommended this book sooner. Okay, maybe I was, but I have a terrible memory. Um, okay, so... Thank you, sir. Fucking asshole. Anyway, sorry, there's cars. So, I have been reading a lot of smut this month. I'm sure I'll talk about it more in the wrap-up at the end of the month. Or you could follow me on Goodreads. I recently made a Goodreads link down below. Haha, <laughs> I am part of the community officially! I've got the bookstagram, I've got the booktube, I've got the Goodreads. I do not have the book Twitter though. Fuck Twitter, I hate Twitter. I deactivated my Twitter for a reason. Twitter is horrible, that's the T and I do not miss it whatsoever. Anyway, so back to the topic at hand. I initially didn't plan on doing a video of this sort, but yesterday I picked up this book called The Sluts on a whim. This book is The Sluts by Dennis Cooper over here, and I didn't know what this book was about. All I knew was that it had like a provocative cover and that I would see it, you know, around Bookstagram and it was recommended on a couple of lists on Goodreads. I saw that it was pretty dark, and the cover looks pretty sexy. So I was like, okay, maybe this is some smut-ish kind of, you know, dark literary fiction that deals with heavy subject matters. I could fuck with that. Bitch. B -b -b bitch Okay, girl, girl. <laughs> this book was one that I devoured, and I did not expect it to be what it was, okay? And you might be asking, what is it? Um, this is one of the most disturbing fucking books I've ever fucking read, and I don't really like comparing books because I know that they're all their own thing, but just in the interest of telling y'all what the vibe of this book is, I'm gonna say that it's like a love child of Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke by Eric LaRocca and Lovesick by John Athan. If these two books had a baby and got adopted by the Marquis de Sade who wrote The 120 Days of Sodom, you'd probably get this book because Yo! So I finished this book yesterday and naturally it made me kind of obsessed with the author, Dennis Cooper. So I started watching interviews of his and it turns out that a lot of his books are like this. Like, he is gay, and he writes, you know, very, like, sexual and violent books, and I'm like, I like that shit. How, how have I not heard of you, dude? <laughs> and I definitely plan on reading more books of his. I don't know if I'm gonna turn this into a vlog, but for now, I want to talk to you about The Sluts by Dennis Cooper, which is one of the most interesting books I have read all year. Okay? Let's get started. So yeah, basically I'm obsessed with the guy and Dennis Cooper, if you're watching this and you need a seasoned degenerate sugar baby, I'm here for you. Contact details down below. <laughs> so this is one of the most transgressive, hyper-sexualized, yet never arousing and gory pieces of fiction I have ever friggin' read. And that, my friends, is saying a lot. If you know, you know. Seriously, if you're not in the mood to read a clinically described graphic castration scene that made me feel like my balls were fucking going back into my body and my asshole was dilating, don't read this book. Yes, this book does have a lot of sexual stuff in it, but if you think this is the kind of audiobook you can listen to with your vibrator up your, like, snatch or up against your dick, I don't know, um, that's not the case. Like, this is very dark, disturbing shit, so just be forewarned. So this story is very interestingly told. This is a story told as a series of posts on this message board. So it's like you're reading a giant Reddit forum, and this is a message board in the early 2000s, which is why it reminded me so much of Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke, because that book is like that too. But unlike discussion of apple peelers, the posts on the message board are posted by a bunch of Johns who are rating and reviewing escorts that they've slept with. So the more reviews we read, the more we learn that a certain escort named Brad has become the object of desire to many of these men on this message board. And no, he isn't a statuesque Greek god by any means. He's not no Henry Cavill or, you know, fucking Tom Hardy, I don't know, Michael Fassbender, my type. <laughs> He's often described as this, you know, like, hairless, skinny twink kind of guy. And, like, there's this air of mystery around Brad and this 
pulse of deep desire toward him, bordering on fanatic obsession. Because based on these reviews, there are apparently no limits to what this guy will let these disgusting men do to him. Even more disturbing is that Brad claims to be 18, but a lot of the reviewers who review him say that there is no way in hell this guy is 18. Like, he is 14 at best. Total jailbait, like total call the cops. 15 pages in, I was like, this is not smut. This is something you need to call the police for. And I was like, bitch. I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't this. Yeah, so basically the whole book is you reading through these reviews and trying to piece together the mystery behind who this Brad guy is. You read about how people grow to be more and more obsessed with him. And before you know it, you are as obsessed with Brad as these reviewers are. And like every account of Brad gets increasingly more enigmatic because these reviews start to come off as very exaggerated and extreme in what people say Brad let them do to him. It's like, Brad, there's no way Brad is still fucking alive if you got away with doing this to this guy. So you start to think, is Brad real? Is this actually happening? Or is he merely a stand-in for the increasingly depraved and unhinged fantasies of these like sick, disgusting fucks? And honestly, the narration becomes increasingly unreliable as the story of these people start to come into conflict with one another. And this makes getting to the truth like so impossible to do. And honestly, this is such an amazing testament to Dennis Cooper's brilliant command of his voice. Like, he is able to make you feel like you are reading from the perspective of a whole host of, like, disgusting, degenerate, creepy, like, pedophilic people with a wide variety of disturbing and inventive and very creative kinks. I wasn't old enough to be around at the time these message boards existed, but I have read through reviews and I have seen that people did say that Cooper managed to capture the feeling of being around in the early 2000s and being on one of those message boards. You know, message boards where, unlike now, one's anonymity back then was so much easier to maintain. This was kind of like the OG social media before we became curated avatars on Instagram and YouTube, Facebook, whatever, Twitter. And he shows how when you are given the mask of anonymity, your deepest desires come out because no one's stopping you from saying them and you can literally get away with you know, saying anything back there and getting notoriety and fame about, you know, what you're able to do. Like, the more horrific the review of this Brad guy gets, it gets to the point where people start to, like, lie that they've murdered him and shit. He shows how these internet communities can become venues for taboo topics of discussion and how like-minded people find communities there and just bounce each other's disgusting fantasies off one another. I don't know if any of you are familiar with this book, The 120 Days of Sodom by the Marquis de Sade. But this book has been described as an encyclopedia of perversion. This message board read like one giant subreddit of some of the darkest sexual fantasies that one could imagine. This book reminded me so much of this one, but updated for the digital age. And much like Saad's 120 Days of Sodom, we see how sexual gratification, when stripped of all moral restraint, you know, becomes increasingly more depraved and violent and murderous. The content of snuff films is a recurring discussion in this book and it's so fucked up and it's so disturbing. But yeah, just like Sod, Cooper takes the forbidden and presents it in a way that isn't coy in the slightest. He doesn't coddle the reader at all, he confronts you and throws in a little bit of dark humor to boot. The more you read through this forum, there's this one guy, I don't think he's got anything to do with the Brad stuff, but he keeps like inviting people to this other other message board where they just fantasize about killing this one guy who was in the Backstreet Boys. It's horrible, but it's also like darkly comedic and pretty funny. The occasional shifts in tone are just so seamless and masterful. We don't follow Brad on his journey, no. We follow various accounts of him. And although we're not in the heads of these people, we feel like we are there in this certain time and place that he evokes in the early 2000s, and that we are going down an internet rabbit hole trying to investigate the mystery of who this Brad guy is. Where the story builds up to might be, you know, disappointing to some people, but the journey is honestly more satisfying than the conclusion and whoa what a journey it was. Like imagine reading the diary entry of the sexual longings of the surgeon in the human centipede movies and multiply that by 10. That's this book. Like this book makes other extreme horror books look freaking hopeless and inferior in comparison. And reading this book just felt so dangerous and so like forbidden. This book, like some of Sod's works, 
feels like something that would be passed around in secret, like, read this if you dare, you know? I don't know if anyone has seen that movie Quills over here. This was that movie about the Marquis de Sade, and we follow him on his last days when he was arrested in prison in the Bastille, when he had written Justine, um, one of his earlier erotic works, I believe. And that movie doesn't really cover all the atrocities Sade did in his life. It's more of like an indictment of censorship and shit like that. Still a great fucking film, but there's like a scene in the movie where he is passing around early drafts of the 120 Days of Sodom to people just like there in the jail. And they're like in the laundry rooms and in the dining areas. You know, the people who work at the prison and wash the clothes and shit were passing the manuscript around like, ooh, read this if you dare. And this book kind of gave me that vibe. It gave me this vibe. Um, yeah, I would have a much easier time recommending this book than this book. Like, this book is for people that are, yeah, just maybe avoid this one. Also, I do recommend the film Quills now that we're talking about it. I know you probably haven't heard of this film, but it's got real big actors. It's got Jeffrey Rush, Joaquin Phoenix, Kate Winslet. Um, it's like a legit movie movie, okay? Very underrated. I don't know why more people haven't seen this film. But yeah, anyway, that's just like a side note. I definitely want to read more of Dennis Cooper's work, so I might read The Marbled Swarm and put that in its own extreme horror vlog. We'll see. Um, yeah, I definitely do want to know what your opinion on this book is. Let me know down below if you've read it. For a lot of the extreme horror books I read, like, I know that I'm gonna sit down and do a full vlog on them and just talk at length. But with this book, it was like, I didn't plan on doing a vlog for it because I didn't know it qualified. So the fact that it reminded me of this, I mean, this one still holds the crown because it was written by someone who literally got off on seeing people get beheaded outside his window. Um, when he was in jail, so I don't think this can be topped. But the fact that the sluts gave me some of these vibes was like, you know. If that's not a disturbing book, I don't fucking know what is. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for watching this super random freaking video. I know it's not my usual setup, I just literally had to open up my camera, put it here, and just start freaking talking. But the sun's going down, and my lighting is getting bad, so I'm just gonna peace out, and yeah, check in soon. I lose myself